Good afternoon, or welcome to the Inspiring Ink in Facebook page, or welcome to the Inspiring Ink in YouTube channel. I'm Amanda Fowler, and today is Tuesday, the 8th of February 2022. Thank you so much for joining me live, and if you're watching the replay, please do comment, let me know where you're from, and enjoy the chatter. If you uh, have never seen one of these craft and chat videos before, let me explain that we're going to chat for 20 minutes um, or so, and then I'm going to be doing some crafting. So if you're watching the replay and you want to get straight to the crafting, you can fast forward the video, um, but I would love it if you hung around and chatted with us. So I am just going to pop over to Facebook and put in a link for the YouTube. Let's see. Yeah, I am live. Okay. So, um, in case you are having technical issues, pop over oh, to oh, <laughs> it's really hard. I'm just looking at myself here on the screen and, and I'm kind of up in the air with my fingers because that's where my laptop is. Pop over to YouTube. And then I just need to paste. Honestly, I can't type either. Technical issues. Issues only has one S, <laughs> not three. Oh, right. So I am hoping that that will mean that you can click on there. So let's, let's see. Oh, <laughs> look at all those comments. A million comments have arrived <laughs> while I've been typing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's going to, uh, just warning you now, it is going to be one of those afternoons. Um, yes. So I've put in a link for YouTube. Sometimes people have issues on Facebook um, and it's to do with lots of things. It can be your Wi-Fi, it can be your local area, it could be because your husband or the kids are watching something on Netflix, it could be um, you've done an update or all sorts of things. There are so many reasons why sometimes Facebook is a little bit glitchy. So if that is you, if you're having issues, then please pop over to YouTube because that tends to be more stable. So can you see me and hear me better? And I know I'm going to get comments. My glorious monster dragonfly is still here in my office, but apparently it was a little distracting because it was, it was kind of up here and it, yeah. So I've just got my little dragonflies back. I'd be interested whether you find my background distracting. Um, <clears throat> let me just pop him back. That's good. Okay. So I'm gonna let you know who's here, what's going on. Got lots of things to talk to you about, lots of things to share, a few giggles along the way. And like I said, I've been having one of those days. <laughs> yeah. So when I've finished here, I think I'm going to go and put my feet up for a bit. <laughs> and then just chill out. So Jen's here. Hi, Jen. Um, I've got your email. I need to have a quick chat with you. So I, I will give you a ring later. Hopefully, if you're in. Uh, Margaret's here. I spoke to Margaret this morning. 
Good morning or good afternoon. Karen's here. Karen, are you better? She was poorly last week. Donna is here um, from Oz. Scylla's here. Chris and Angela are here in Newbury. Kathy's here from Arkansas. Oh, Donna, thank you. She shared my video. Yeah, you see, I forget to ask people to do that. So if you're on Facebook, there's a little kind of arrow that you can share me, share my video. And that's really cool because what happens is all your friends can see me being live and then they might come and hang out with us. There's a there's a few things distracting me here. Look, there we go. That's a bit better. <laughs> Normally, you can't see quite as low. So, and down here, underneath here, is where all my, my yarn lives. <laughs> and I'm not telling you how many boxes I've got yarn in because that would, that would be telling. Um, okay, so Deborah's here, Calgary's here. Um, I've got the link up for YouTube, that's good. Mum's here, hi, I'm Mum, Pauline. Julia's here, Julia, I hope you're feeling better as well. Sue is here. Deborah, Lorraine, so cloudy south coast. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't even know what the weather's doing outside. I haven't stick my, stuck my nose out the door. No clue. <laughs> so, so for any of my local local chatters, let us know what, what is it doing outside. I can't even see. When I'm here in the studio, the curtains are shut. So I can't even see out. Julie's here. Anne is here. Janet. Everyone's saying it's all good. On Facebook, brilliant. Jan's here. Kathy's here and Karen's feeling much better. Oh, Julia's still not good. Hopefully, you'll be better soon. Okay, so I have a few things to show you, a few things to share. Um, tomorrow, there is a new kit launching. Um, and I can't show you anything about it because I don't have it. Um, but for those of you that love kits, this is a home decor piece. It's a 12 by 12 magnetic notice board. And it comes with little pockets that you can um, embellish and all sorts of things. So it's a really fun um, piece, but I think it will be, I, I'm excited about it. <laughs> but I think if you've got, um, a teen or a 20 something that you don't know what to buy them for birthday or even Christmas. And I am going to say Christmas. And the reason I'm going to say Christmas is because mum messaged me yesterday to tell me she's already started her Christmas shopping. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of on my mind. But I think it will be a great gift. Um, so I will email out all the details tomorrow with a link. So you can see it. There's a video that uh, walks you through making it and everything. So it's really cool. But it launches tomorrow. It's £24, um, but looks really good. So so that's happening tomorrow. Obviously, celebration's still going on. Ta -da! Um, so if you spend £45 or multiples, you can get things for free. It finishes at the end of February. So, you know, don't, you know, don't be sad because you missed out on the otters. Every year I have people going, oh, but I wish. I meant to place my order and I forgot. So don't forget. And I know we get busy, but remember. And if you're placing a £45 order, you'll qualify for a free clap craft. <laughs> See, I told you. Even my words going funny now. A free clap. <laughs> a free clap. <laughs> oh, I could drink my coffee. Hang on. A free 
craft along in March. <sighs> yeah, so because it's it's a forty pound spend, so you'll you'll definitely get that as well. So that is a really good reason for doing that. Um, and as always, I would love you to join my team. I was speaking um, to a lovely customer the other day and um, she's on the cusp of retiring and she's thinking about joining um, so that she can share her crafting with her friends. And I think that's just awesome. Um, she's going to gather a few friends together and she's going to have like a little class um, with her friends and they're going to all um, be able to get their crafty goodies from us. So that's just really lovely. Um, and I am really hopeful, really hopeful that we will get to Vienna in November. So um, stamping up on stage, which is basically our convention, it's three days and it's just full of crafting and inspiration and fun and laughter and adventures and yeah we have an amazing time so i'm really excited about that so um and that's a demonstrator only event so you have to join my team come come hang out in vienna with us in november so that's going to be very exciting so um <laughs> one of the one of the things that's been driving me crazy today i had my hair cut on thursday and we decided to do something a bit different with the back of my hair. And I don't know whether you can see, but I've got this, this bit of hair here. That's like a little horn. And it just kind of, it just doesn't, it's not sitting where it should. And it's just, it's really distracting. Look, oh, it's really distracting. So I keep, if you see me fiddling, it's because it's a bit of a weird, it's, oh, I I don't know. It'll grow, won't it? It'll be fine. <laughs> Maybe when it's grown, it'll flatten out. <sighs> so let's have a look. Uh, Janet's here. Donna's here. Kathy. Paul's here from Italy. <laughs> I'm not saying that word, Paul. <laughs> it's because I couldn't. I couldn't say craft along. Yeah. Wrong words. OK, so I have some wonderful cards to share with you. Um, I'm just so lucky you send me the most amazing cards. So this one is from Elizabeth S. And look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? I love that fish. That's so cool. Um, and if you don't know what star this is, this is a bow front card. We did this at a craft along December. It was December's craft along, um, this style of card. And um, yeah, I, I know that there are lots of you that have missed out on some of the craft alongs. So in the next couple of weeks, I'm not going to say. Mm. probably let's say by March because if I say in the next couple of weeks it doesn't happen you'll be sad um in the next couple of weeks three weeks ish um the pdfs will be available to purchase so if you've missed some you can you'll be able to get them okay hi Stella Texas is in the house so this is from Elizabeth and that's a happy new year card which is awesome um, I have to say, several of these cards have been here for a while, but they got buried underneath my diary. So I put them there, so they're safe. So I remember to bring them upstairs when I come and talk to you. But obviously I haven't. So there you go. So this is from Colette. This is one of the uh, lovely uh, scrap styles cards that we've done a lot of where we've used small pieces of patterned paper and matted and layered them. Uh, this one is from Roz. 
beautiful daisy card. Hi, Tanya. And then this one is from Liz. Which is really lovely. I love these. Well, let me see if I can see the little circles. So what she's done is she's taken that was um, the mermaid paper that we had. Um, but, you know, any kind of glittery, shimmery paper. And she's obviously just punched out some little circles. And, you know, we all have scraps of paper, don't we? So, you know, realistically, you could punch out lots of little circles and that makes really nice embellishments. Now, my iPad battery is about to die, so I have to show you this really quickly. Now, if you were not here next last week, this next bit will sound all a bit weird, but just, just hang, hang with us for a minute. So last year, I did a crochet along because... Um, I do all of my paper crafting. That's my full time business. And I love my paper crafting. But over the past two years or so, I've been learning to crochet. And I found through lockdown, lots of people were also doing crochet. So here on the channel, we did a crochet along. And if you scroll either Facebook or YouTube, you'll be able to see um, a scarf pattern that I, I made and we did lives and all sorts of things. So you'll be able to see all of that. And um, I said last week, would anyone be interested in doing another one? Now, the answer was a resounding yes. And lots of suggestions about what we could do. And one of the main suggestions was a snood or a cowl. And the conversation went on and we were talking about a cowl for a dog. Now, I, I without checking my notes, I can't see who, who it was. Um, but um, I remember because it was a greyhound and we were talking about the, the fact that you could have a cowl and it would keep the dog's neck warm. And I'd never heard of anything like that before. And neither had anybody else. But it is, it's a it's a thing. So let me just quickly show you. Can you I'm hoping you can see that. Can you see that little dash hound? So absolutely, I'll make sure that there is a size for a dog. <laughs> because that's just too cool. But then Joanne, thank you, Joanne. Honestly, I, I normally I write down who said what. So, Joanne, thank you. That's so cool. But then Karen said that she wanted one for her chickens because she didn't want to feel left out. So I did Google cowls for chickens and look what I found. Look what I found. Now, obviously, it's not a cow for a chicken, but it's a dog cow in the style of a chicken. <laughs> These are things that you never knew you needed. <laughs> So um, I, I've got to stop giggling now. But anyway, it seems that you can make anything <laughs> or do anything. But um, Karen, the, in order, in order to make them for the chickens, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to get me measurements. So we need to know how big it could be. So jo <laughs> Joanne says I'm surprised at that. Well, who knew? Who knew? Okay. So I need, I'm going to drink my coffee a minute. Um, so what did you all get up to at the weekend? Tell me what you did at the weekend. Brian and I had lots of plans at the weekend and we achieved none of them. <laughs> Not one. 
See, and 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 the weekend has just kind of gone into the into this week, and it's just getting crazier. So, if you read my blog, you'll know um, we had a mission at the weekend. We were going to find some two farmers crisps, um, which are plastic free bags of crisps. I'm really excited about it. Found a local distributor, got there, got to the garden center, none. <laughs> and they don't stock them anymore. So that kind of fell flat. I do have another plan. So with any luck, next Tuesday, I will be able to report back. Um, we did, however, manage to find some seeds that we wanted. So that was good. Um, some chives and some sorrel. I think it's sorrel. Lemony sorrel. Does anyone know? Do we have any gardeners? Um, chives, sorrel, rocket. Oh, and some marigolds for underneath my um, damson tree. So, um, yeah, we just scatter them and, it, and they just, you know. It, it just looks looks very, very na au naturel underneath my damson tree. So that's good. Um, and then Sunday, we just ended up with dealing with family stuff and, and things. So just it did not go to plan at all. Um, so we were supposed to be looking for a sofa. <laughs> so eventually we did do a bit of online looking. And we've sent some fabric samples. So again, that's going to be in the next two or three weeks. We'll actually get to do that. So let's have a look. Um, so there is a lot of laughter about those dog cowls and the little dog outfits. Actually, if you if you start going down that little route of dog outfits, there's dinosaurs, there's all sorts. Um, Tanya's saying she loves the sausage dog snood. Yeah, that sausage dog was beautiful, wasn't it? Deborah's saying her mini dash hound would love that. <laughs> but she can imagine her chasing her own head instead of the chickens. Stella sent out 20 cards. That's amazing, Stella. And do you know, isn't that a great feeling? Um, you know, we make all these cards, but it's a really awesome feeling when you actually send them out. <gasps> Tanya, she found a lost key. It's been lost for four months. Wow. Donna saying she had a quiet weekend. Good afternoon, Roz. Don't worry about being late. I did. I showed you your card a minute ago. Here, look. Thank you. So, yes. So, I am going to be sharing with you today the Tulip Flowering Fields Bundle, the Tulips. Let me show you. The flower, Flowering... <laughs> the Flowering Fields Product Suite. Um, I'm going to be showing you this stamp set and these dies, not this one, these, and the papers. Um, so if you remember, a little while ago, I did um, a bit of a show and tell about the daffodils and um, how to put them together. Well, I wanted to show you the same with the tulips because the, there have been a few questions and I just wanted to, to go through that with you. Um, I'm going to go through the stamps as well because there are layering images in the stamps and show you all the dies. So I'm going to swap my cameras around, hopefully. Let's just see. Let's put that 
there. Okay, so can you tell me if you can see and hear me clearly still? Um, whenever I change the camera around, I always worry that you might, all of a sudden, you might not be able to hear me. Yes and yes. Yeah, look at that. Everything, everything's okay. Awesome. Awesome with my bare nails. Look. No nail varnish on my nails. Just oil. I'm just giving them a bit of a rest. Um, we'll be back to shiny nails next week, but giving them giving them a week off. <laughs> a week off of nail polish. Okay, so let me just move this bit first. So this is the flowering suite, flowering fields product suite. It's on page 14, 15, 16, and 17 of the mini catalog. Um, I'm going to focus on this stamp set and its matching dies. Um, but I do want to show you this. So if you forget how to put the tulips together, pay attention to that image just there because that shows you exactly how to put them together. So, um, yeah, so that's really cool. So here's the papers. Now, the papers come as 12 by 12 sheets. This is all I have left of several packs um, because... We played with these in team training. So this is all I've got, <laughs> this bit. Um, so it is basically this image, but with lots of different colours of tulips over the whole 12 by 12. I love this particular pattern as well. This is it's really beautiful. And then on the back, you've got this purple. Um, there is, um, it's like a colour wash. And can you see that tiny splodge there? So in two of the corners, that's actually kind of extended. So that's a really lovely pattern. Polka dots, you know me, I love spots and stripes. And we've got lovely clouds. Then we've got... Um, these lovely, lovely tulips and another background, um, sky background, obviously with the with the sun reflecting there in the clouds. Then you've got all the oranges and creams and this. And again, this is another watercolour wash. So you've got dark areas and light areas. And these little sort of petals, which are really pretty. And then this sheet is really cool. So it, it extends out this way. And these panels come out like you're looking at a field of tulips. So it's really, really lovely. And then you've got this kind of watercolour wash again with the blues and the greens. Good afternoon, Evelyn. Germany's in the house as well. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so that's the papers. So let's talk about the stamps next. Now, you've got two-step stamping with the stamps for the flowers. So you've got pairs. So you've got this flower and then this piece goes in can you see where those two little lines are I'm going to I'm going to stamp it in a second to show you but those two little lines are so that goes inside there you've got this bud that goes inside that bud 
And then this is the kind of tricky one because you look at it and you're not quite sure which one goes on top. But this one is the lighter colour and this more detailed one is the darker colour. And then you've got the little, that little bit there, look, which is like the stamens in the centre. This squiggly wiggly <laughs> adds dimension to the stalks um, where they're standing. So that's really cool. And then obviously you've got these pieces too. But I will show you how we're going to stamp those in a few minutes when I get busy making the card. So the next thing I want to show you is the dies. Let me get them all out. So there are 17 dies. Now the first thing I'm going to show you, let me get the stamps back out is you've got these three images and they cut out this flower, this flower and this flower. These cut out the leaves but obviously work independently as leaves as well. These two are stalks and I'm going to show you these actually cut out in a minute. This is a beautiful edging die. This is a weird one. <laughs> it cuts out little cubes. It's very effective and very cool. And then you've got these pieces, which are the layering pieces to make your tulips. And then this piece here is to cut out the squiggly wiggly. That bit there. Okay. So let me show you the die cut pieces. So this one, let's start with this one. Let me bring it up to the camera so you can see. See it a little bit better. Look, there you go. Can you see how cool that is? And I've got a card using this to show you in a minute. And then that's the little cubes that I'm talking about. So that... This is a great way of just adding a bit of texture or dimension to your projects. Um, it's just really cool. And so then we have the pieces that cut out the stamped images. So that's those three. The leaves, the stems, and the squiggly wiggly. And then these are the pieces. Just ignore, I don't know whether you can see them actually. I've got little cubes everywhere. Um, these are the pieces that make the flowers. So to do so what I'm going to do I'm going to take all of those away so we can just concentrate on these so these three make your main flower so this is the most open one then the next and then the bud so that goes like that that goes like that and that goes like that. Now with the bud, you just need an inner as well. And Stamping Up have given us three of those. So you've got one for each of them. But 
they only gave us one of these which is really sad because you need it for both of these two so what i've discovered because for me what i want to be able to do is put everything on one sheet of cardstock and cut it out all at once so you've got this die so it's this one And it's similar, it's not the same, but it's similar to that one. So all I did was I die cut it and then I just kind of followed around the shape. Like that. So I made that one the same or similar. So I've got two bits there now like that. Does that make sense? So what you have to know about these tulips is they have a score line and it's really hard to see on camera, but where it joins here, that's a score line and you just fold it in half. And that makes your first bit of your tulip your V piece goes inside and your oval piece also goes inside and that's how you get your tulip. Now, obviously this is all the same color and I'm gonna show you some with patterned paper in a minute. And this is very flat. So what I recommend that you do is you bend the petals Bend them with your fingers rather than a bone folder and, and tearing them. You can ink them. Um, but when you layer them, layer them with uh, dimensionals or glue dots. So what I'm going to do, so I've, I've bent them all. Where are my glue dots? Ooh. So I'm just going to put a glue dot on the front of the oval petal and i'm going to stick it underneath the v shape and then i'm going to put a dimensional there and i'm going to pop that inside and then i'm just going to wiggle it about a bit <laughs> until i'm happy with the way it looks just move it over a bit more Move it over and down and, and you will just fiddle with it a little bit. So don't worry about that. And then you're just going to stick down your additional petal. So that's that one. Then you've got this one. Now this one's got two bendy bits. And when you look at it, the curve... The downward curve is actually the base of the petal. So it goes together like so. And then obviously you've got your V-shaped bit and your little oval like that. And then the last one is the bud. And again, it's got two folded pieces. And then you've got this little oval piece that kind of goes in there like so. So they are really, really straightforward to put together. But you just need to make sure that you cut all the things. Um, but where did I? Yeah. So you can see. So. You know, you just need a small strip of cardstock that's probably three inches, four inches, um, 10 centimetres, a quarter of a sheet of cardstock to cut the petals out. And the thing is, if you cut the petals out multiple times in coordinating colours, you can mix and match all the layers, which is really, really cool. So I'm going to show you step by step how I, I make the flowers 
um, as I as I make a card. Um, but I do have. Do I have? Ha! Huh. Oh no! Where did they go? Can you just talk amongst yourselves for a minute? I had a couple of cards to show you. And they're not here. And I need to get them. So I will be back in one minute. I'm back and I found them. Yay! Okay, so the <laughs> so the first thing is I've got another card to show you from Margaret. Margaret's here as well. Look at this, isn't this cool? With the beautiful little daisies here very cool thank you margaret um okay so i had this card to show you so this is using the patterned paper the tulip pattern paper and that die cut piece which is so beautiful and this gorgeousness is um soft succulent satin ribbon so pretty <laughs> so Evelyn's saying the border's gorgeous and she can already see the tiny cutouts from this little thing flying all over her craft room yes it will Tanya's saying it's so me she loses everything and <laughs> And Kathy says she has so much fun watching me because I'm a genuine person. Yeah. There's no hope for me, really, Kathy, I think. <laughs> because I forget everything, lose everything. So, but this is really cool. Um, Lorraine, I don't know whether I'm going to use this DSP in a craft along. Um, I've got all sorts of different plans. But the catalogue goes all the way through to June. So I honestly don't know right now. I haven't planned to use it yet. So um, it's certainly not coming in the next couple of months. So that's that one. And then I do have a second card to show you, but I'll show you when I've made the card I'm making. Oh, right. So... <laughs> Let's start out with a bit of stamping, which I want to show you the flowers because it's important that you, you see the flowers. Ba -ba. So if you remember, each flower has two layers. So you've got a detailed layer and a less detailed layer. No. <laughs> yeah, detailed. Yeah. I don't know. I think I need to stop talking, to be honest. But then, you know, <laughs> well, what would be the point? My, <laughs> my words are just not coming today. I'm sure some people work from a script.
but we get just my random chattering. Okay, so this is Flirty Flamingo. Let's just have a look. Which one is which? Right, so that's that's the softer one. So I'm using the same colour but stamped off. So this is Flirty Flamingo and I'm going to use it full strength for the detailed stamp and stamped off for the um, inner part of the flower. Now, stamping off is a really easy. You ink up your stamp, you stamp it on your grid paper and then you stamp it on your image. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to try not to get my head in the shot. And line it up. Interesting. Hmm. Bear with me a second. Right. Okay. So if ever, so <laughs> this is this is my tip. Look, if ever you look at a stamp and you're thinking, okay, so how exactly does that one sit on top? Always have a look in the catalogue because you'll be able to see. Because the people that made the stamps know where everything goes. I'm going to have to stand up. Let's see. So I can look over the top. So what I'm actually doing is lining up this cutaway piece with that cutaway piece there. Ta-da. We'll see. Yeah, look at that. That's so cool. Okay. And we're going to get the little stamens or otherwise known as frinkly bits because they look like a fringe. <gasps> look at that. Okay, so let's, <laughs> I'm getting so excited because there's just really cute things going on. So let's just put in a stalk. And to be fair, tulips normally stand up straight. This one's obviously on a bit of a wonk, but that's okay. Oh, that's so pretty. I haven't stamped it in this flirty flamingo before, so that's why <laughs> that's why I'm going. Oh, that's really pretty. Um, and then. This, I can't, that one's not going to work. I'll stamp the next one straight. But look at that. I'll stamp the next one straight. So, <laughs> or I'll try anyway. So let's just put the stalk in and the leaves and then I'll try and get the Try and get <sighs> then I'll try <laughs> then I'll try and get the um this little wiggly thing in the right place. Does anybody know what the wiggly thing's called?
so here we go so it's it's designed to sort of add like a little bit of dimension like a little bit of grass or grounding that's what it's called it's grounding for your flower go me I actually made sense there okay so we've got flower number one flower number two is this one and the one that looks like a heart so let me show you it's this one this one and this one And it's much easier this time to see where it goes. So I'm just going to stamp the flower. So that's the full strength. And then I'm going to lift this up. And can you see the two lines at the top? That's where the two bumps of your heart-shaped piece is going to go. Now, again, this is going to be stamped off. So you're going to stamp it onto your grid paper and then stamp over the top. And there we go, just like that. And that just gives you the dimension there, look. And that's just... That's so cool. Honestly, I'm going to be using this little wiggly thing on everything now. Very exciting. OK, so let's let's go for the third. So I'm just cleaning and please do not worry about the state of my Simply Shammy. They are supposed to go like this, I promise. And every few weeks I sling it in the washing machine with all of its friends um because I have several of these because of classes and um they come up cleaner <laughs> they don't come up clean um they never come back to the lovely pale purple color that they used to be um but they do come up cleaner so right so last last one so let's go with this so i'm going to put my stalk down and then my wiggly bit because i'm going to put my wiggly bit down first and then i can put the leaves in the right place and we'll get the full effect of the wiggly bit <gasps> look honestly for that stamp alone, you need this stamp set. <laughs> because for all your trees and everything, it just grounds it. <gasps> That's so amazing. And to think I wasn't sure about the use of the wiggly bit. Right. So let's put some leaves in a bit higher up this time so we don't hide away that wiggly bit lots of people saying how clever that is so okay so let's just show you the bud so that's these two pieces. So this obviously is full strength and that one is going to be part. So we'll do that one first. Full strength. And then this one, we're going to stamp it off. And then stamp it over the top. And there you go. Look. Lovely shading there so cool so cool okay so um look there are the there are the three cards 
I might actually have to stamp that one again. <laughs> so I've actually got like a, a set with the wiggly bits. So I'll probably stamp that again before I put it on my blog. But I am going to make a card with the die cut pieces, but I do need to stamp the inside of the card. So I am going to do that now. Time's running away with us today. <gasps> I missed that. Yeah. We're okay. It's okay. I'll be quick. Roz is saying she loves the grounding stamp and the tiny squares dies. Margaret's loving the grounding bit as well. Jan saying it's really clever. It is I love it when we get things like this. But you look at it and you're not really sure. And then you just stamp it and it's genius. Makes sense. So there we go. So this is for the inside of this card. Okay. Love it. Right. So, whoa, I'll just shut that up because that's otherwise I'll get ink everywhere. Clean that off. I've got my happy birthday, which is from Art Gallery. And I'm just going to stamp that and cut it out because we're going to need that later. So that's, this is the only bit of stamping on the card I'm about to do. So I'm doing this quite a lot. I am randomly cutting words and I'm, I'm not worrying about them being a bit wonky because I just think it adds to the charm of it. And I'm just putting these mini dimensionals on the back. Now, we have our normal dimensionals, our normal foam pad hexagons. These are the mini ones. Can you see the difference in size? Of course you can cut these down, but it does drive me a little bit crackers after a while because all the bits end up sticking to your scissors and so on. So these little teeny ones are really cool. And did you know we have black ones? So um, the black ones come in a mixed pack. So you get two sheets of minis and two sheets of normal sized ones. Which is really cool. Hi, Jane. <gasps> Jane's in Disney. Which Disney? Disney in the UK? Disney in, in far away? <gasps> I hope you're having a nice time. Anne's just got back in from seeing the snowdrops. Oh, and don't worry, you can watch on the replay. I've still got loads. <laughs> I'm still going. I'm going to be going for about another 10 minutes. <laughs> Um, Debbie is from North Carolina in, in the USA. Oh, Jane, have a wonderful trip. She's in the Sunshine State. Oh, what are you doing watching me, Jane? Shouldn't you be? Oh, she's mainly craft chopping. I was going to say, why are you not with Mickey Mouse? But that's okay. If you're crafting shopping, that's a good thing. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's get all of my components for this card. This is this is all a bit messy, everyone. I know crafting is messy, but even so, I don't want you to see it all. <laughs> so I have got a card blank. This is a flirty flamingo which is the same 
as um, the stamped image that I did. That I now don't know where it is. Oh, it's there. I've got some vellum. Now, the lovely people who were on the craft along last week heard me confess that I'm not actually a fan of vellum. <gasps> I know. Shock and horror, Amanda. How can you say that? Well, the reality, <laughs> the reality is I don't like things that are tricky. So I love to be able to craft and enjoy it. And vellum can be tricky because of gluing it. But you'll see from this card that I've got a few hints and tips for you and you'll be able to use this on your cards as well. So um, this is a layer. It's a quarter of an inch or half a centimetre smaller than my card blank. So whichever size you want. And I'm going to tear it. I don't want you to panic. <laughs> So I've torn that edge and I'm going to tear the edge of this um, card front as well. And I'm pulling it towards me and I'm taking off again about half an inch, about a centimetre. So I've got two torn edges. And they're just going to sit side by side. And then what I've got is a piece of mossy meadow. And I'm going to back that to replace the torn off bit. So I'm actually bringing in this darker green to the card. And the way to make sure it fits is firstly line it up with the edge of the card there. And then get your Tombow and run a little bit along that edge there. And squash it down. Try not to get glue oozing everywhere. So basically, you've got this extra little bit here, but that just gives you a really nice finish. And then that piece is going to go on the top. But first, we're going to assemble the tulips. Now, I have already die cut the tulips. And I used some of the patterned paper and I think this is something that we forget to do a lot we often just die cut things out of plain card and actually die cutting these leaves out of patterned paper just gives so much more interest and I've die cut the tulips from the Simply Marvellous paper, which is in celebration. And it's a free paper. There you go. It's free with a £45 order. And I'm going to show you, I've got a Bumblebee uh, version as well to show you later. But this is the um, Flirty Flamingo version. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to assemble these tulips and I'm just doing the two big ones. So I'm not doing the bud. So I'm going to do my little trick again. I'm going to make another V-shaped one from that piece. So I'm just going to cut into it like that and just make sure. Can you see that's a bit of a sharp? point there just make it curvy and then I'm going to take so this is the larger size tulip and I'm just going to bend the petals bend the petals of the v-shape and I'm going to stick so I'm going to stick the 
oval. And stick the oval to the V. And then I'm going to use dimensional to stick the V-shaped piece inside. inside that tulip piece there and then I'm just going to put a little bit of Tombow there like I said I mean you can use Tombow but you can equally you can use um, blue dots you're going to struggle with tape on this because they're quite small but look makes your beautiful tulip so you put one there and then this one so again i've just folded folded over these layers here so again i'm going to stick the oval piece to the v-shaped piece give it a bit of bend a bit of dimension put a dimensional there Slide it in. So you're happy, and then pop a little bit of glue like that, and then just fold those pieces over. Like so. Just hold it down. And that's going to make your second tulip. So <clears throat> the stems that you can die cut, there's a thin one and a thick one. So this was too thick for me. It just felt that the dimension was wrong. So I just cut it in half. Lengthways like that. And then it kind of matches the other one a little bit better. So I'm going to put that one, which way around am I going to go? That way around, I think. So I'm going to put the stems down first and then put the uh, tulips over the top. Have I been saying daffodils? <laughs> Please tell me I've been saying tulips. So I'm just going to put some Tombow on the back and pop that down. And then I'm going to pop the second stem down. Margaret said, I'm only saying tulips. That's really good. I'm very grateful. <laughs> That's what I was saying. And then you've got these lovely two leaves here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pop one of them down. And then the second one, I'm actually, let me lift this up to show you. The second one, where that's joining, I'm just going to kind of pop it over the top so it just kind of covers it a little bit and i think i'll put a little bit of dimensional there and i do this quite often so i put dimensional in the middle and then a little bit of tombow top and bottom and it it then what it does is it lifts the leaf can you see is really cool okay so now if you remember i said i had a tip for you about sticking this down so now 
we know where these petals are going to be. So we can put glue there because you're not going to be able to see it. So the other thing we do need to do is to put the sentiment on because then we'll be able to glue it at the bottom as well. Hi, Lainey. She's from Southern California. Thank you so much for joining us today. And she's thinking it's really clever to use the patterned paper for those pieces. Yeah. I think sometimes we have so much beautiful paper that, you know, we just, we, we don't use it. So it is really cool to use it. Okay, so now look, we've now got lots of spots that we can put glue. So you can put glue here and here and there. And when you stick this down, you are not going to see any of that glue at all. Now, because this is vellum and it's not absorbent, it will take a little bit of time for those pieces or that glue to stick. But we have got to do a little bit of, of bunny ears. So I'm going to use this gold twine. Hello, Winnan from Utah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jan. Okay, so bunny ears. This is making a bow when, you when you're not tying it around something. So you're actually just making a bow to stick down. So what you do, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see that this is going to be dark enough. So you make a loop and then you make a second loop. And you cross the loops over. And the loop that's on ooh, the loop that is on the top goes through this bit at the bottom. So it goes underneath and through. And then you pull the two loops and make it tight. And then you pull on the tails. You pull on the tails to make a bunny ears bow like that. Now, if that was too quick and you didn't catch it, on my YouTube channel, you'll um, if you search for bunny ears bow, Inspiring Ink in Bunny Ears Bow, you will find the video. And I've got like a little playlist of um, different ways of tying ribbon. And, you know, I consider myself bow impaired. I really do, because I'm not that great at making beautiful bows. So I have to remind myself how to do it. So that's one of the reasons I made all the videos so I can remember how to do them. And the great thing about the videos, obviously, is what you can do is you can pause me and, you know, slow me down a bit. Let me just trim that off. Da -da -da. There we go. So I am going to move all this debris. Oh, I forgot to stick that one in. Um, all this debris, and then you'll be able to see the finished card. And then I've got a second version to show you. I am, oh, two more versions to show you. I'm not going to make anything else. So that's going to be for the inside. Decorate the insides of your cards. Make them look so pretty. Look, move it all. Get it out of the shop. <laughs> You're going to hear stuff falling on the floor imminently. Right. So, there you go. There is our finished card. Here is the yellow version. So on this one, I've used um, linen thread 
And it's the same simply marvelous paper, um, but the, the yellow, the bumblebee version. So you've got the pink version. And then here I've got a card using the paper from the flowering fields. That's the purple version of the Simply Marvelous paper. And this here, that's just um, papers as cardstock. So you can see kind of the difference with using the patterned paper as opposed to the card as well. So there you go. Finished cards. And whew, it's been a long crafting chat today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I really appreciate you coming and, and visiting me here on a Tuesday afternoon. I'm here every Tuesday at 2 p.m. and that's UK time. And um, I always have, we have, it's called craft and chat. So we have a chat to begin with and then we do some crafting. All of the products that you've seen today are available in my online store. If you scroll down, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you'll be able to see clickable links to all the products. And if you want any more information or um, need my help with, with anything Stampin' Up! related, I'm hoping that I've got my mouse look. and No mouse. The mouse is not moving. So... I'm, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I was going to put up my email address, but it's it's not going to work today. So if you need me, email me, amanda at inspiringinkin.com, and uh, I will do my very best to help you. And if you've got any requests for future crafting chats, products that you want me to showcase, things you want to see, techniques, fun folds, 3D projects, let me know. Send me your list and I'll put it on my list and we can make lots of lovely things together. Thank you so much for joining me today and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.